The next thing we want to do is just take a quick peek at the value range tab. Now this tab is all about setting valid value ranges for the domain that you are creating. If you set a value range and a user enters a value in a field outside the valid value range that you set up, they will be shown an error message and be requested to enter a valid entry. Now there are three options for the value range. The first we can see says single values and this is where you actually enter a list of individual valid values that a user can enter. The next is intervals. So if you have quite a lot of values but they're all related or all in a sequence you can enter the lower limit and upper limit for example a lower limit of 1 an upper limit of 9 and that saves you entering 9 individual single values. A user can only enter a value that falls within the ranges that you specify. The last option you have is value table. When you have a large number of possible entries it's quite common to use a value table instead of a value range or list of single values. With a value table, you specify a complete valid value table entry list. But please note that if you use this option, you must also introduce foreign keys to your table to ensure the user's entries are tested against the value stored in the value table that you create. We don't need to enter any value ranges for this domain. So all we need to do is click the Save button once again, we are presented with the object directory entry pop-up box and we want to assign this object as a local object. So click the local object button. Now the next thing we want to do is activate this object. Even though we have saved it, it doesn't mean we can actively use it within our table yet. We need to set the object as active which means our other data elements can actually use this domain going forward. So on the toolbar, you'll see a little matchstick icon. If you hover over, it says activate. And you can also press the control and F3 key. Click the activate button. And then you're presented with a pop-up box, which lists three different objects that are currently inactive. You can, if you wish, try and activate all the objects together, but I strongly advise you do not do this. When you are working in a typical development environment, you have got a number of other people creating developments all the time. And it's quite often you will see their objects appearing in this list, or maybe you've got a number of development projects on the go for yourself, and you could see inactive objects that you've created yourself in other projects that you don't want to activate just yet. So for now, we only want to activate the domain. So our top entry, object type DOMA, we can see ZEENUM. It is highlighted at the moment. So all we need to do is click the green tick. The system goes away, checks all the entries we have made for the domain itself. And if everything is okay, it will then activate the object. And if you look at the status bar at the bottom of the screen, everything's okay, so we can now proceed on with creating our table. Now remember, we used forward navigation for generating our domain. So all we need to do is step back. So click the F3 key, and you are taken back to your data element maintenance screen. Now because we have created and activated our domain, we can now see the text for our domain has actually come through and been placed beside the ZEE num entry that we entered before. And it has brought back the individual domain properties that we created. Now the next thing we need to do is define the field labels. So click on the field labels tab. And here we need to define the short, medium, long and heading field labels for our data element. 
Now a little shortcut here, we've already entered the short text. So if you highlight that and use your control C key to copy the entry to the clipboard, then you can come down to each individual field label and just paste it in one at a time. Now we can see for the short field name, our employee data element does not fit into the field label. So then just go ahead and tailor it so it all makes sense. Now remember, the field labels that we enter here are going to appear as field labels on our table. So we don't actually want it to say data element. We just want it to say employee or employee number. So in this case, I'm going to choose employee N, employee number, and copy that to the remaining field labels. Now you'll see on the left hand side, there's a length field, which I have on purpose not filled in. Because once you put the entries in the field label, then press the enter key, it will automatically calculate the length of the entries that you have typed in. Once this is complete, save the data element and then activate it. Again, we get a window showing the inactive objects. This time, we're only left with two objects. And remember, we only want to activate the object we are working on right now. So highlighted, we can see object type DTEL, which is the data element. So just click the tick button. And if everything works out okay, the status bar at the bottom of your screen will show objects activated. Now again, we used forward navigation from our table to create our domain. So all we need to do is press the F3 key or press the back button and we step back to our table maintenance screen. And you can see right now the employee field that we were creating and the data element entry that we keyed in has got the appropriate data type, length, decimals and short text brought back into our grid to indicate everything is working okay. Now we have just gone through the sequence of creating a data element and domain that we then use for our field. We are going to use the exact same practice for creating four additional fields.